Hi, my name is Tenzin. This is a quick overview of a blood supply to brain. We are going to learn amount of blood reaching the brain artery which supply the brain, branches of artery and circle of villus. In normal healthy individual, the percentage of cardiac output reaching the brain is 15%. To get the absolute value, we have to know what is cardiac output and stroke volume. Cardiac output is the volume of blood ejected by left ventricle per minute. Stroke volume is volume of blood ejected per beat and is also equal to n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume which is 120 ml minus 50 ml we will get the stroke volume of 70 ml. Now the cardiac output which is also equal to stroke volume into heart rate which is 70 ml into 72 beats we will get the cardiac output of 5 liter approximately. And now we know that the brain is getting 15% of cardio output which is a 5 litre approximately. We will get the 756 ml. Therefore the brain is getting 756 ml of blood per minute. Ok now we will learn the arteries which supply the brain. There are two main arteries. Internal carotid artery and basilar artery. Internal carotid artery branches from a common carotid artery which is a branch of brachycephalic artery on the right and arch of aorta on the left. Basilar artery is a branch of a vertebral artery which branches from a subclavian artery. In this diagram we can appreciate the branches of internal carotid artery from a common carotid artery and a brachycephalic artery. Also we can see the branches of a basilar artery from a vertebral artery and a subclavian artery. Now we will see how the internal carotid artery passes into cranial cavity. Internal carotid artery passes through the carotid canal and enter the cranial cavity via forearm and lacerum and forward to cavernous sinus. These artery, actually all the arteries supplying the brain are present in the subarachnoid space. As internal carotid artery passes through cavernous sinus, it gives rise to following arteries: ophthalmic artery, posterior communicating artery, anterior choroidal artery, which supplies the choroidal plexus of the third and lateral ventricle, anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery and anterior communicating artery which joins the right and left anterior cerebral artery. In this diagram, you can appreciate the internal carotid artery and its branches. We know that the common carotid artery branches into internal carotid artery and external carotid artery. From internal carotid artery, there is mainly a six branches of arteries, ophthalmic artery, posterior communicating artery, anterior communicating artery, anterior cerebral artery, middle cerebral artery, anterior choroidal artery. You can memorize this as a opama. Now the basilar artery. Both vertebral artery from subclavian artery as it reaches the lateral side of a lower part of medulla, it moves medially and meet each other at a pontomedullary junction and move as a basilar artery vertically. It also gives few branches, but before that vertebral artery itself gives two important branches, anterior spinal artery and posterior inferior cerebellar artery. You can appreciate these two arteries in this diagram. Branches of basilar artery are anterior inferior cerebellar artery, pontine artery, labyrinthine artery, superior cerebellar artery. We can memorize this as a slab. And in this diagram, we can appreciate all the branches of basilar artery. Now we will study circular villus. 
it is an stomatic system of a artery that sits at the base of brain which encircles the stalk of pituitary and provides important communication between blood supply of a forebrain and hindbrain. It is formed when internal carotid artery enters the cranial cavity bilaterally and divides into anterior cerebral artery and middle cerebral artery. Two anterior cerebral arteries are then united by anterior communicating artery. This connection forms the anterior half of circular villus. Take a look at this picture and appreciate the anterior part of circular villus. Posteriorly, basilar artery, which is formed by the left and right vertebral artery branches into left and right posterior cerebral artery forming a posterior circulation posterior cerebral artery complete the circular villus by joining the internal carotid artery system anteriorly via posterior communicating artery take a good look at this diagram and appreciate the posterior circulation of circular villus some clinical significance of circular villus are subarachnoid hemorrhage. Circular villus is one of the important sites where the aneurysm occurs. Arteriovenous malformation. Subclavian steel syndrome. Blood is stolen from a circular villus to preserve the blood flow to upper limb. Subclavian steel syndrome result from a proximal stenosis of subclavian artery and stroke.